So in the previous lesson, we looked at how we could align and flip and mirror and basically organize our objects on the space. If you want to have a repeating pattern, it's not really as intuitive as some other packages. CAD objects tend to be parametric. That means that you can put in parameters, you can put in numbers, you can say how you want to space things apart and you can do repeating patterns. Whereas Tinkercad being more geometric shape based is a little bit different but it still gives us a little bit of that ability. So let's take a look. I'm going to put my work pane back here so that we're working on the same axis. And I'm going to get rid of all of this and start over. Just so we've got something to start with or group that together. So we've got three, three pieces here that have merged together. I could drag the same things on again. I could repeat that process, but instead, what would we normally do if we want more than one? We would say, okay, let's copy and paste, right? Copy and paste. But then we would still have to line them up and there isn't really an alignment that says I want to space them out equally. So what do you do instead? Well, instead of doing a copy and paste, you can do a copy in place, which is Command D or Control D. And then when you move the first iteration and then do Command D again, it'll repeat that process and you can keep going. So that's the first option. That's in a line, right? So what about if we do Command D and then we do it in the Y orientation, does it the same way? And as you'd expect, you can also do it in both dimensions or even all three dimensions. So we've just duplicated and placed in three dimensions and it has made a nice pattern for us. And you can also add rotation. So if I drag this more into the middle, do Command D, and then move it a little bit. And then do Command D and Command D, Command D. I can do a rotation. So that's pretty cool. And again, we can introduce three dimensions. And some rotation to make some really cool effects. Now, Command-D, the duplication, isn't the only way to do it. And we've got some shape generators. So we've looked briefly at shape generators before. And uh, we didn't really go into it in much detail. So the first would be if you want to create this kind of a shape, maybe you want to do a rack and pinion, you know, you want to run some gears against this. And it has a lot of parameters. Remember what I said about being parametric. This is actually script. It's actually JavaScript that you can edit, you can create yourself. But when you give it parameters, it allows you to have this user interface where you can change the objects and you can do some really cool stuff. So that's the first repeating pattern that's really useful. As I see, we've got grids here, we've got extrusion grids, so you can set your shape. 
and then it'll make a grid pattern of this shape. Rotation and columns. And then we've got polygons, we've got cogs, we've got cylinders with different parameters. Very useful isometric threads. So we can create an object and then you put like an M3 thread in it. Got gears, stairs. So there's lots of objects here with repeating patterns, a circular array. So that's a parametric version of what we did earlier. So it's worth playing with those to see if you can get the effects that you want. There's two ways of doing it within the package and then in the next lesson we're going to look at how you can import line art illustrations and uh, you can get some similar effects that way.